Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. I wanted to go over a little scripture here and talk about a couple things. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I'll read the first few verses and then just talk, kind of summarize the rest of it here. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed? even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Paulo, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. So Paul was pointing something out with the believers in Corinth. And I've talked before about spiritual maturity and about babes in Christ versus people who are mature. And one of the things you can tell if somebody is a babe in Christ still or how mature they are, and this can apply to yourself too, how much are you still hung up on the surface? People. How much are you, how, how much are you still hung up on Envyings and strifes and contentions and jealousies and all that kind of stuff. How much does that still rule your thought life and your life? I mean, these people had it figured out. Well, I'm of I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I'm of Cephas, which was Peter. You know, whoever they came to believe in Christ by. They, there you go. They started their own first denominations right there. The the Paul the the Paulites the the Apollites the uh, Cephasites and I mean you know it's a uh, they start naming themselves after these men and Paul's like what are you doing? We're just ministers giving you this stuff. It's God that gave us the message. We're giving it to you as his ministers, and we're responsible for how we handle the word of God and present it to you. And but God's the one that gave us the message. They're His words. We're one as as ministers. God's the one that gives the increase. God's the one that builds the building, not us. Paul went on to say he laid a foundation, but, but the foundation was Jesus Christ. It wasn't Paul. He didn't lay the foundation of Paul. He didn't lay the, and, and he went on to say later on in uh, that chapter, if anyone builds on this thing, whether it be gold or silver or precious stones or wood, hay and stubble, That'll all be found out in the day of Christ. It'll all be tried with fire, and that which isn't of any value will be burned up. Even if the person themselves is still saved, their work will be wasted. And what does that mean? That means if anybody comes on when you're building God's building, the temple of the Holy Ghost, when you're when you're 
doing God's work, if you're doing God's work in your name, for your credit, for your glory, for your uh, advancement, it's wood, hay, and stubble. It's junk, and it's not going to survive. When Paul said, I laid the foundation, there's only one foundation, which is Jesus Christ. It's not Paul. It's not Apollos. It's not Cephas. It's not any of these people. It's just Jesus Christ. And the building you are is God's building. And you guys are having all these fleshly, carnal disputes try, causing divisions among yourselves based on which apostle you heard the gospel from. Or which one taught you initially. Or I came and taught you brought the gospel to you, Apollos came along and watered it, and one's picking one and the other as if we're on opposite teams. That's looking at things in the flesh. That is looking at men and not God. And we do that a lot. You know, way too much in the church. You know, you just... God's the one that counts, not the, the men. God bless them if they're good stewards, if they're doing God's work, and if they're doing it faithfully for the right motives, God bless them. But even then, keep in mind what they're supposed to be bringing to you is Jesus. They're, they're supposed to be bringing God's words to you so that you, as God's building, are built up by God. All they are is God's laborers. That's what Paul's saying. And if you can't see that, then you don't have a spiritual mind. You don't have a spiritual outlook. You're looking at the flesh. You're looking at the carnal, the fleshly, the, the physical, and you're getting stuck on that. And that is wrong. That means you're immature, you're carnal, you're a babe in Christ, and you can't advance. Paul said in Romans, uh, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Same, same idea. Death is and division is it's all these things and strifes and it's all going to come from being fleshly minded from loving this world looking at the things of this world looking at the surface looking at the messenger elevating the messenger above, above the, the, the one who he's bringing the message from and as soon as you do that you're, you've revealed yourself as a carnal Christian, as somebody who's fleshly minded, who is who has no maturity, who has no, um, you know, spiritual outlook, and you know you're stuck, you know, in the flesh. Soulish, as uh, Watchman Nee called it, you're not you're not spiritually minded, and you can't fully understand what God's got for you. You can't fully understand God's word. You can't fully understand the Christian walk. You can't fully understand the things of God because you're carnal. Because you're stuck at this carnal level. And you won't mature past a certain point. You'll stay a babe who has to be fed with a bottle or whatever. You know, you're, you're, you're just never going to get very far with a carnal mind. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, not in the flesh. Yes, we honor our bodies because of God. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. We honor God by keeping our bodies in line. 
to be good servants to God. But you get hung up on the flesh and pretty soon the next thing you know, you're trying to do works to earn things from God. And it's like it doesn't, that's not how it works. Good works are a fruit of the Spirit, not a result of the fruit. They're fruit of righteousness. They're not the result of right. They're not the cause of righteousness. And you can tell the difference between carnal Christians and spiritual Christians by what they get stuck on, by what they focus on, and what results from it. You know, what does it matter? Who you heard the gospel by. As long as it was true, as long as it was the true gospel, as long as it was, you know, conviction of sin, repentance from dead works, and faith toward Christ, as long as it was the true gospel and not some other gospel, like Paul talked about in Galatians, does it really matter which minister is the one that preached it to you? Does your salvation become more or less valuable based on who you heard the gospel from? Or who baptized you? Like Paul was saying, people getting hung up on that. He said, thank God I didn't baptize that many of you. Otherwise, you people would start saying, I baptized you into Paul. God is the source. It's his message. These ministers, if they're faithful stewards of the ministry that God has given them, God bless them. They'll be rewarded according to their labor. But the fact of the matter is, they're God's messenger. The foundation is Jesus Christ. That which is built upon the foundation, if it's built by the Spirit of God operating through people and, and for the right motives, it'll stand and it'll be solid. If it isn't, it'll, it's wood, hay, and stubble and it'll be burned up. But from a personal standpoint, you have to get to the point where you see things spiritually. From a spiritual perspective. Don't get stuck on the flesh. Don't get stuck on the carnal things. Don't get weighed down with petty arguments, etc., etc. They were taking each other to court, civil court, and he was bringing, calling shame on them. They're like, what are you doing? You're taking brothers and sisters in Christ to a civil court? Do you not have anybody wise enough to judge matters between you? Carnal. Don't you know that we're going to judge Angels, he, Paul said, and you can't judge simple matters? If I were you, I'd pick the least esteemed among the brethren to set as the judge in a matter. That's what Paul said. But too many times in the church world today, you see just acres and acres of carnal Christians or false converts who aren't really Christians at all. They came up and made a decision for Christ, but they have no idea what they were making the decision for, really. Because they wanted to get some best life now stuff going on or whatever. I mean, they don't, they never did feel sorrow and contrition and repent of their sins. You know, and come to Christ for salvation from their sins and to flee from the wrath to come. They didn't. They didn't come for those reasons. They came to for, to get life improvement. And so, when life doesn't go well, they fall away. If you're if you came to Christ to, to so you could spend eternity and live forever with Jesus and avoid burning in hell forever if you it, with that with there's the fear of God coupled with the love of God if you, if you came for the right motives hardships don't drive you away from the church hardships don't drive you away from God 
people and their divisions and their stupidity and their carnality and their pettiness and all that kind of stuff doesn't drive you away. Because you're not there because of that. You didn't come there because you wanted a smooth, easy life. You didn't come there to avoid tribulation and persecution. Yeah, you, would we all rather do without persecution and tribulation? Of course. But the fact is, that's not going to happen. And if you, if somehow being persecuted and going through trials and tribulations and temptations and, and attacks is going to make you give up on God, then you were there for the wrong reason to begin with. And you weren't even a Christian. You were, you, you were a false convert. But if you know that the reason you're a Christian is so that you won't burn in hell for eternity and so that you can, and in your gratitude toward God for offering his son in our place to pay the penalty for us so that for faith in him, we can have eternal life. If that's the reason you're there, then you're going to stay as a Christian no matter what happens to you. Your motivation doesn't change just because things go rough around you. But if you came there just to have some awesome, easy, heaven on earth, best life now thing going on, then guess what? When things start getting rough, well, this isn't that great. What good is Christianity? It's not preventing me from having heartache, grief, loss, persecution, suffering. Well, what's the point? Well, the point is, that's not why you should have been a Christian in the first place. If you didn't come to Christ because you saw the exceeding wickedness of your sinful heart, and you saw that you had offended a righteous and holy God, who in his righteousness would send you to hell for eternity because you decided to remain in your sins and reject him and trespass and transgress the law and come to the point where you sit there and say what can I do to be saved oh I thank God through Jesus Christ my Lord he came flesh dwelt among us lived a perfect life sacrificed himself for my sins took my sins upon him took my punishment upon him and for faith in him and repentance from the dead works and faith toward God, I can be born again and inherit eternal life. And that gratitude and that love, we love him because he first loved us. If, you're, if that's not the reason you're a Christian, you're not a Christian. I'll just tell you that right now. And you're going to end up being carnal and always focused on the external, on the fleshly. Who are you to say I'm not a Christian? Somebody that can read the Bible, that's who. <sighs> but anyway, carnality is a big problem. Even among genuine believers, Carnality is a big problem because they haven't matured to the point where they take their eyes off the surface, where they take their eyes off of men, where they take their eyes off of the flesh and look to the God who is behind all of it. Until you can do that. If you start looking at Dan and thinking Dan's anything special, you, you miss the whole point. You've missed the whole point. Dan is just trying to be an obedient servant to bring God's word to you and help you figure out how to apply it in your life as he's figuring out how to apply it in his. Don't miss the point. Anything of value I have to give to you comes from God and His Word. Not my Word. His Word. That's all. The, the, everything else I have to give to you is of no value. 
to your soul, to your spirit, to your eternity. And that goes for any minister out there. I don't care who they are, whether they're a pastor, an evangelist, an apostle, a teacher like me. I mean, it doesn't matter what ministry they have. If, if they're doing their job right, it's to bring Christ as a more real, living, breathing person to you. To have Christ formed in you. And to let you walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. That's the job. Well, that's what I had for you tonight. <laughs> I hope it helped somebody. I hope that was uh, helpful to someone. As always, I love you. God bless you. And God willing, I'll talk to you again real soon.